Hey gang, it's good to be back with you. And this is another in a series of videos about mathematics. And today I want to talk just briefly about the differences between mathematicians and engineers, or really between mathematicians and the rest of us. Now I've never heard of another professor having a conversation like this with students, and I'm not sure why. It seems like it would help a lot if we understood where everybody was coming from. Most of us have taken math classes, and a lot of us have struggled with those classes. It doesn't seem sometimes like the people teaching the class and the people taking a class are having the same conversation. And I think the difference is between the way mathematicians and other people think about mathematics. Mathematicians prove things. That's pretty much what they do. It's probably not correct to think that all mathematicians spend their time calculating things. That's mostly physicists, engineers, and other scientists. Economics, there's all kinds of things. But mathematicians don't spend most of their time calculating. They prove things. Mathematics is uh, based on a very rigorous foundation of mathematical proofs, logical proofs that are shown to be true within the system of logic that created them. So it shouldn't be too surprising that mathematicians by nature tend to be puzzle solvers. They're really interested in the puzzle. And that's great. I want my mathematicians that way. It's more rare to see engineers or scientists who are puzzle solvers. As an engineer, I'm a process guy. I need to know how to calculate a number because I need to know what that number is going to tell me. I need to know how much a car is going to weigh. I need to know how much fuel it's going to burn. I need to know whether a bridge is going to stand up. I need to know what the range of an airplane is. For me, mathematics is a tool. The exact opposite of somebody who thinks of mathematics as a puzzle or a voyage of discovery. I don't want my airplanes designed by people who are on a voyage of discovery. I want them knowing what they're doing and I want the tests to prove that the mathematics is correct. Now, neither group is wrong, they just look at it differently. For me, the problem was always that I, as a process guy, who needed mathematics as a tool, was trying to be taught by puzzle solvers. They thought about it differently, and I was unable to bring my way of thinking around to match theirs. Let's take the simplest possible example. The proof has been around for thousands of years now, millennia, I think, that the square root of 2 is irrational. Now, I'm not writing this in formal mathematical language, but this is what it means. Square root of 2 is not equal to a over b, okay? where a, a and b are integers. That's the definition of irrational. Mathematics is tight, it's concise, it's precise, it's really, really clean. Okay? It's almost like law. Every symbol, every word means something very specific. So the word irrational means this, where A and B are integers. It's not the popular uh, definition where if somebody's being irrational, it means they're being illogical. No, this word irrational means exactly that. The square root of 2 is irrational. The proof is fairly simple. If you read the right book or look at the right website or article, you'll see it. I am told that it is a very beautiful proof, and I'm sure that it is, although I'm not really, I, I don't have that power of perception. Turns out the square root of 3 also irrational. The proof of the square root of 2 and the proof of the square root of 3 are different. Square root of 5 is irrational. The proof of that one is different than these other ones. They're all puzzles. So to a mathematician, ooh, cool, it's a puzzle. Oh, this one's different. This is a new puzzle. This is wonderful. To me, this is driving me crazy. What do you mean the square root of 3 is also irrational, but for a different reason? Well, it turns out they're all part of a larger idea that the square root of all prime numbers are irrational. Okay, I guess that's good. So what do I do with that? What do I as an engineer do with that? Well, I don't care that the square root of 2 is irrational. It's interesting, but it isn't helpful. For me, square root of 2 is approximately, let's see, I got it written down here, 1414, 1.414, uh, 2136, and there's, there's some more out there, but that's, those are the digits I need. If I know that many digits of the square root of 2, I'm going to work with it just like I do any other number. It doesn't matter to me that the square root of 2 is irrational. That's the problem. When somebody says, you've got to learn this proof, this proof only works for this number, and this one set of arguments doesn't work for any other prime number, 
what I hear is that, okay, you've, you've handed me a wrench to put in my toolbox. It only fits one bolt on the entire earth, and my job is to carry that wrench around just in case I need it. No, I refuse. Well, I don't know if that's the right attitude. It probably isn't. But that's how I think about it, and that's how many people think about it. So, the division of labor seems to be that mathematicians either discover or develop new mathematical ideas, depending on how you think about it, while others tend to uh, put those ideas to use for problems of practical interest, so that engineers uh, may develop new products and processes, physicists may calculate things that are valuable or interesting about the world around us, chemists, economists, all these people can apply mathematical ideas to make our lives better. And this seems to work pretty well. So when you go into a classroom, it may help to remind yourself that when you're learning mathematics, you may be learning it from somebody who thinks about it very differently than you do. And that's okay. Neither one of you is wrong. Hope this helps. We'll talk to you next time.